Welcome to the Entrepreneurial Biome Podcast, a space for nurturing the ecosystem of business, body, and living. What would it be like if you gave your body a leadership role in your business and chose greater happiness every day? These are the conditions that create a healthy biome and a thriving business. I'm your host, Heather Nichols, and I'm so happy you're here. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Entrepreneurial Biome Podcast. I am here this week. It's so fun to do a podcast with somebody (laughs) in person, like really, like not just like talking to another person, but like sitting next to them and talking to them. Um, So I am really excited to have here with me Andy Dorantes, who um, is an amazing, amazing lady who has done so many incredible things in her life um, and really uh, uh, a grand adventurer uh, of the earth, the planet, like she's traveled all over the world. She's She has summited the seven summits, um, which if you don't know what that is, she can tell you more about it, but um, including Mount Everest at a time when Uh, She was basically the only one because it wasn't like, you know, technically a great idea to go up, (laughs) but she knew something different. (laughs) Um, And I promised her that I wouldn't make her rehash her, her story today, but that we would talk about something a little bit different, um, which is really just the way that she lives, um, which is about always looking for the next adventure and creating it with a lot of ease. So thank you for being here. I'm super excited to be here, especially because that means being in Colorado for the first time. (laughs) So yeah, I'll be here in your podcast anytime. (laughs) Yeah, I was like, wait a minute. I've been wanting to have you on my podcast and you're in my house right now. (laughs) So why don't we do this? (laughs) Yeah, I can be here every week. (laughs) That's awesome. So um, without, you know, rehashing every, because you've told your story so many times and and this isn't about like, you know, there's lots of places you guys can go watch other videos and stuff and we'll share those if we can, if we can find them. (laughs) (laughs) Um, But um, yeah, what do you, what do you like, what do you want, what would you like to share about your story and about the joy of adventuring? Well, I grew up in Mexico in a city. So growing up, I didn't have many access to the outdoors. It was until I moved to the U.S. to go to school here that I discovered something new, and that was the outdoor industry. And from there, I fell in love with it, and I wanted to do more. And when COVID hit, I had to go back to Mexico, and that's when I climbed my first mountain. It's Pico de Orizaba. It's the third highest peak in North America. And I felt something in my body that I've never felt before. It was like this sense of just being alive, being grateful to be on this planet. It was just like something amazing. Like I cannot put it into words. And I was like, oh my God, what is this? And then I remember I reached the top of the mountain and I saw like one of the most amazing sunrises I've ever seen. So everything just kind of like combined to have the perfect experience. And from there I was like, okay, I want to do more of this. And I remember I reached the top and I asked myself like, whoa, if this is what you can see in the highest point in Mexico, like I cannot imagine what it's going to be like to be on top of the world. (laughs) So I had just climbed one mountain and I was already thinking about Everest. So from there, I kept climbing a few more mountains. I went to Ecuador and I realized that my body adapted to altitude really well because that's a big deal. You know, like if you're not... If your body is not having fun at that altitude, you're not going to have a good time. And my body loved it. Like the higher, the better I perform. So uh, I was about to go back to Mexico from Ecuador and I didn't have a job. I didn't have any plans and I didn't have another trip, another adventure. So I was like, okay, I love climbing. I love traveling. So I'm going to climb the highest peak in every continent. And it was just a simple choice because I didn't really know what it was going to take to do it. <laughs> and then two years after that, I'm the fastest Latin American to ever do that. So it was pretty cool. Amazing. And uh, the youngest? The youngest well? as well, yeah. Yeah. Because how old are you? I'm 27. 27. But I yeah. don't feel that young anymore. Yeah. <laughs> well, age is kind of just a random number anyway. Yeah. But, you know, it's just kind of cool to... to 
yeah. I mean, I, I've had one other person on my previous podcast, not the entrepreneurial biome, but um, Mark Pattison, who also did the seven summits and um, he did it uh, recently and he's, he's uh, I think in his fifties. So um, not that you have to be, you know, any particular age, but I know people oftentimes don't get to create that until later in life. So, um, and, you know, I mean, I love that, like right off the, right off the bat, you're, you're including, you know, talking about your body and, and just like, it's like really the sense of your body having led you and asked you for this, like show, shown you, you know, mm -hmm. Hey, this is something that I really enjoy. Can we, and I'm good at, and it's easy <laughs> for me. And can we have more of this? Yeah, to be honest, I never thought about it that way, but it's true. Like, if my body wanted it to do it, then it showed me the way to do it with total ease. You know, like, yeah, it just happened like magic. Like, people ask me, like, how do you find the sponsor? How did you do this? But it, everything just lined up because I made the first choice. Yeah, so, that's so cool. Yeah. Um, and, you know, that's a big part of the conversations here on the entrepreneurial biome. And what I, I always love to include the body because, any, anytime you include the body in anything that you're doing, whether it's something like this, which of course you're going to, you know, but a lot of people do it not like not with that kind of inclusion of their body. It's a different thing, you know, um, but uh, but with business, with whatever it is, it's like when you are present with your body and you're listening to your body and you're honoring your body um, and letting it show you what's fun for it, you know, Um that it's always going to create more. And it's funny because when you were talking about being on top of that summit and seeing the sunrise and what was going on in your body at the time, I had this sense of, I love being in nature too. I I've never climbed peaks that high. I have definitely climbed peaks in my life, but, um, but um, for me now, like I had this sense of like, it reminded me of the energy of when I go to Paris <laughs> and my body loves Paris. <laughs> I wish my body was like that. <laughs> it just sounds way better than being cold and miserable. <laughs> yeah, Paris is a good idea. <laughs> but but I bring that in because it doesn't, you know, it's like the the point is the adventure, you know, and and the adventure can be climbing a mountain, it can be you're doing a half Ironman while you're here in Boulder. Um it can be that, you know, it can be um, taking an absolutely exquisite nap, you know, it can be going for a gentle stroll or going to Paris or, you know, there's so many different things, skydiving for people. I, mm. I would never jump out of a plane. Like that doesn't sound fun to me, <laughs> but you know, there are people that just love it, you know, and it doesn't mean that you're right or wrong or better or worse. It's just like, what does your body enjoy? And if you follow that, um, it's I think you can have such an incredible sense of co-creation yeah. with your body and your life. For me, it's all about just giving my body the chance to explore new things because like, how are you going to know if your body likes it or not, if you don't even try it. So for me at this point in my life, it's more about like trying different things and see what my body likes and what it doesn't. And then from there, just do whatever I love and do it as, until it's not fun anymore. Yeah, I love that. <laughs> and that is, you know, I, I used to say people, cause I run, I'm a runner. Um, and, uh, but I don't, I never run like long distance or long, you know, like, so people will ask me like, oh yeah, like how much do you run or how much did you run? It's like, until it wasn't fun anymore. Like the, I, I run <laughs> until it's not fun anymore. And then I stop. <laughs> so as soon as you walked out of the door, you would stop. <laughs> actually enjoy it but but yeah it's like oh this is fun I'm gonna keep doing this oh okay this is you know it's it's starting to be less fun okay I'm gonna stop you know um and that's so not like the athletic way of doing things you know you're supposed to like time and you know your heart rate up to a certain certain thing you know a certain amount of time blah 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 that's that's so boring to me. <laughs> well for me like training for this half Ironman it was different because now I had to commit more because I had like every day I knew what I needed to do. You mm. know, like I have a coach and he tells me like, okay, you have to run this much. You have to swim this much, bike, blah, blah, blah. And for example, I was in Europe for four weeks 
And honestly, I didn't want to train. Yeah. You know, like, yeah. well, I was cycling there because it's amazing, but that's the only thing I wanted to do. And he talked to me and he's like, you're just doing junk miles. You know, you're just getting your body tired for nothing. And I'm like, uh. and I reply, it's not junk miles. For me, it's happy miles. Yeah, you know, exactly. like, and I know my body so well that I know that, I can do that because I'm having fun. I'm enjoying it. And when I come back, I'm going to have the results that he expects from me. Yeah. Well, I love that. <laughs> and, and okay. So will you talk a little bit about um, the Everest summit? Because to me that like you have this beautiful, you are really, I, you probably don't realize how different you are and in, in how dynamically you trust your body um because you went up to the top of Everest when nobody else was doing it <laughs> your team was coming down they didn't summit you didn't have enough technically quote unquote enough oxygen you know all these different elements yeah and you knew that you could you knew you would be fine yeah I I mean Heather just told the story it's real quick. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you did the highlights <laughs> so I don't have to talk about everything but yeah there were definitely some things that we were not expecting for example our oxygen bottles being stolen the night before and so that meant I had to go with half of the oxygen that I was planning but I didn't want to make that, that a big deal I trusted my body and I knew I could do it but yeah when I reached the south summit that is at 8,800 meters it's only 48 meters difference from the real summit uh, I saw some of my teammates coming down and I asked them if if they had reached the summit because they had lots of experience climbing big mountains. And they told me that the storm, because there was a big storm that day, that the storm was really bad up there and it was impossible to go to the summit. But as soon as they said that it was impossible to go up there, like something didn't click in my world. Like I knew I could do it. I trusted my body. I trusted the earth and I trusted my gut feeling. So I just went for it. I didn't really think about it too much. And I'm glad I didn't because once you start getting your mind involved, everything just like, yeah. it, you know, like everything it diminishes just, everything. Yeah. <laughs> so it was just like, okay, it's impossible for them, but I'm still going to go. And we reached, I reached the summit with Jabu, my Sherpa, and we were the only ones there. So that was pretty special because Everest is nowadays like really crowded. So we were probably at the top for five minutes. That was that was it. And I was trying to get a picture, but my phone was frozen. My GoPro <laughs> batteries kept dying. So going back down has been the hardest thing I've done in my life because I thought I didn't have any proof that I was on top of the world. Wow. You know, like I, I thought I didn't have a video. I thought I didn't have a camera. So I'm like, how am I going to tell people that I made it to the top if I don't have any proof? And, you know, I was so frustrated going down, like, my mind was just like, oh, my God, I can't believe I don't have any proof. But then, like, a few months later, I realized, like, oh, my God, how much do I need other people's validation? Because mine is not enough. So that was, wow, that was tough to learn because seriously, going back down was really tough. Wow. Wow. Yeah. And, yeah, like, yeah, I mean, you you got, you, you it's, I think it's kind of cool. It's like, that was, that's like yours experience your experience and and only yours like yeah. nobody else can see it no like you you get to have that for you yeah, yeah that's really cool but at that point i didn't think that was enough yeah, yeah. so it was, yeah. so to be honest being on top of the world i didn't enjoy it that much wow. because i was just thinking about how frustrating it is that i cannot get my batteries to work wow well, you know, <laughs> it's, a, amazing? It, it's like, it's, it's so stupid. It's so frustrating because it's like once in a while, well, you can go more than once, but only if you're crazy. Well, why would I want to go up there again? <laughs> but it's like once in a lifetime opportunity, you're there, you can enjoy it. And you're thinking about other people's validation. And the future, you know, yes. there's, there's proof in the future that it, you made. That it. blew my mind. It's like, yeah. oh my God, this society is just. We have to prove everything. Yeah. Everybody. If if it didn't, if you didn't post it on social media, it didn't, it didn't happen. happen. <laughs> <laughs> it didn't happen. So it's just like, oh. that's amazing. Well, yeah. Well, so you know, one of the things that we, when we talked about this, the topic, um, uh, and thanks for you know indulging us in a little bit of the story. Uh, but um, 
I love uh, like what I really wanted to highlight with you is the sense of this 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 love lust I would say probably more accurate energy for adventure you know and you're like well, I already did the mountains I don't need to climb more mountains you know now I'm going to do this thing so talk about that well, as I said, I didn't grow up in an adventurous family. Like my family has never been camping. So it's not like it was like it was something totally new for me. And when I started doing it, like for me, it was just amazing. Like for me, this sense of just going somewhere and having no idea where you're going to sleep, who you're going to meet, what you're going to eat, like all these things that most people want to know. For me, the less I know, the better. So I did my first backpacking trip in Iceland and I hitchhike all over the island and for me that was like the first time that I had this sense of adventure that it was so cool to be out there for like 40 days and sleeping in different places every night and just like hitchhiking you know like so from there I was like okay I definitely want to go on more adventures and for me that's something that it's my reason. It's the reason why I wake up every day because I I don't know what the day is going to be like. And sometimes we think an adventure has to be like going to Iceland or Norway or like someplace crazy. But for me, sometimes like going to Walmart is just an adventure, you know, <laughs> <laughs> because you're going to see the Walmart people or something. You know? <laughs> so we can add adventure in our lives like every day. And for me, that's what keeps it interesting because an adventure is something that you don't know what's going to happen. Yeah. That is so cool. Well, I I was before we started this morning. I was thinking about um, the the joy of business, which is a, a body of work that I facilitate, um, part of Access Consciousness. And we um, the the class that it's now called Business Done Different. But years ago, um, one of the classes that we did was called the Adventure of Business and Living, um, and um, I love that title because it like, and if we look at the entrepreneurial biome, it's like weaving this into, I mean, to me, an entrepreneur and the entrepreneurial spirit is, is inherently adventurous. Like your entrepreneurs are people that are really willing to live um, with a certain level of risk that other people are not willing to live from. Like if you don't, if you're not willing to have the uncertainty of, um, you know, with money and income and your business and all of that, uh, you're going to go get a job. You know, if you if you need a paycheck, you're going to go get a job. Entrepreneurs are people that don't, they function from a different economy, um, which is really fueled by, I would say, some level of adventure. Mm -hmm. And um, and so anybody who's listening, if you are an entrepreneur, uh, you know, maybe acknowledge that you know, uh, if you have your own business, because it's, I think it can be very easy to kind of like get in the weeds, you know, of, of your day-to-day -day business and all the things and forget why you're doing it, you know? And I love this energy of like every day waking up and being like, uh, literally there's an access consciousness question of who am I and what grand and glorious adventures can I have today? And it's not just a, throw away question. It's like, if you actually have that curiosity in the morning when you wake up, which you do, yeah. like you, you, that's, that's like such a part of your being. And I love that. Yeah. Honestly, I love adventures because <laughs> you don't know where you're going to end up. You don't know what you're going to do. You don't know anything, but it's just like this curiosity to see where your life is going to take you, you know, because if you asked me three years ago, do you think you're ever going to climb Mount Everest? I would say, no, that's crazy, you know? And like now it's like, I'm just in my mind, I'm just thinking of new adventures and like how crazy can I be? And I trust my body that it can do any task I ask it to do. So that's, for me, that's what I'm exploring right now. That's so cool. So you're here in Boulder, you're doing a half Ironman. Yeah. I'm doing a half Ironman and then in July, I'm going to go to Norway and I'm going to do a big adventure that's going to be, I'm going to be cycling from the top of Norway, Norway, all the way to the bottom of Portugal. So it takes about a hundred days and I'm really excited because you pack everything on your bike and you're sleeping in different places every day and just seeing where your body can take you. So 
I think that's going to be a really cool adventure. I've never been on a gravel bike before. I've never done a bikepacking trip, but like I said, I trust my body and I know I can do it. So it's for me, the, the, cra the crazier it is, you know, the better. I love it. I love it. That is so cool. Wow. Very, very awesome. Well, um, yeah. Anything else? Anything else you want to share or say or ask? Or I mean, the only thing I would say is like, you can always add adventures to your life. So yeah, yeah that's yeah. it. And yeah, like what if we don't, I mean, I love how out of control you're willing to be with with all of it, you know, and just being like, I know I can get to the top, so let's do it, you know? <laughs> Whereas other people would be like, I might die. Am I going to die? I'm surely going to die, you know? And you were just like, no, let's go, you know? Um, and that's, that's so beautiful. And I think, you know, we can all really uh, just receive so much from that, that like the willingness to be out of control um, because that's also something that, we do so much with business and with our bodies and with our lives, you know, is try to control everything into existence. What we've decided needs to be rather than actually allow the adventure to show up, which from what I've seen is always greater than I think it can be. And um, there's such a, such a beauty to that. Yeah, I think you touched on something really important that most of the time when we want to be in control, we want to figure out every step of the way, you know, like we know where we're standing, we know where we want to go, but we want to know every single step. And I feel like that's where we get lost most of the time because it's overwhelming. Yeah. It's, for example, on this big trip, like I know where I have to go to start, but I don't want to figure out every single piece of the, you know, because it would be overwhelming and I would just stop. So for me, it's just like, okay, let's see what shows up. That is so cool. Yeah. yeah. And, and I think, you know, when we do try to determine every step of the way, we really kill the magic. And, and I, you know, I've heard some other of your stories and it's like, there's a lot, you've had a lot of magic show up along mm -hmm. the way, you know, like so much. And that's like we eliminate magic from our lives when we, when we need to be in control and, and not in the adventure. So let's have more magic <laughs> and more adventures <laughs> and more adventure. <laughs> Thank you so much. This is awesome. Thank you everybody for being here. Thank you. Bye for now. Thank you for joining me for the entrepreneurial biome podcast. If you enjoyed this episode, please like share and subscribe. For more resources, check out my website at heathernichols.com and my social media channels as well. Have a beautiful day and remember that your business thrives when you do.